Hello and welcome. This talk is for dementia-friendly East Belfast. I'm John Bradbury, I'm a history author and tour guide, and I'm going to talk a wee bit today about the origin of Belfast street names, where they came from, and all that type of thing. So I hope you're seated comfortably. We'll start with a few names out in the suburbs, just for a flavour. Bit random, I know, but let's see how we can go. A couple of parks quite close together in BT9 are interesting. Derry Volgi Avenue and Son Susi Park are named after the original house that was built before the rest of the street was there, if you can picture that. They're both big, long parks. One's a horseshoe, one is just a straight road. But that would have been the houses of business people, probably linen merchants, as was the case also with Cleaver House, which was um, as in Mr. Cleaver of Robinson and Cleaver, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. And it's now Cleaver Park and Cleaver Avenue. Mr. Robinson was, or Mr. Cleaver, or Mr. Robinson was very successful as well. But so was Mr. Cleaver. And he had a lovely villa and um, tennis courts and a lovely uh, this and that. And it was all great stuff. And uh, he did very well in business, as we all know. And now that is all parks and villas and all the rest of it. And I've got built about the 1930s, as a lot of building did in Belfast. Some streets are named after artists. We've got Lancier Street, which is in Stranmillis, and Orpen Park, which is in Finnehy, for those familiar with that area. Those were Victorian landscape and portrait artists. Franklin Street is a, is a, a street near the centre of town. It was named after a businessman and a mayor, and that's quite a common scenario. There's a Posnet Street which is kind of off where the Crescent Art Centre is, Crescent, Batard, round there. That was named after Hutchinson Posnett, who was a lawyer, a master in chance, chancery, I believe. And I believe he was also a mason. So you'll also often find that streets are named after people who were quite influential at the time. Those familiar with St George's Market might be familiar with uh, Verner Street. Thomas Verner was the last sovereign of Belfast. Sovereigns ran until the 1840s before they became mayors. And then after Queen Victoria came over here and bestowed uh, city status on Belfast in the 1880s, they became known as Lord Mayors. So we've also got places named after rivers and such like and waterways. Not surprising considering Belfast is more or less built on water. We've got Blackstaff Road and Blackstaff Place named after the river, which flowed through much of what is now um, Linen Hall Street, May Street, round there and down to the BBC in Ormo Avenue. And other rivers have also given names. We've got Con's Water, although arguably that's also named after the last great Gaelic chieftain, Con O'Neill. We've also got the Knock. Knock is another river. I've got the area Knock. We've got Loop. The Loop and the Knock come together at the Hollow, as is called in the uh, song by um, Van Morrison, Down by the Hollow and Brown Eyed Girl. We've got Loopland Park and Loopland Grove, both of which are in the kind of Castlereagh BT5 area. There was a school called Richmond Lodge. There's also a Richmond Park around Stranmillis. There was a Henry Fitzroy, who was the first Duke of Richmond and Somerset, and he was Lord Lieutenant of Ireland in the 16th century. So sometimes these things date back a very long way. Now, from the very beginning of Belfast at the start of the 17th century, streets were established. They had to be, obviously, and they had to be called something. The Farset River flowed up High Street, which I'm sure you all know. It was originally called Front Street, and Anne Street beside it, it was a wee, built a wee bit later on, it was initially called Back Street. They were both fairly residential. Anne actually wasn't named after royalty, but after one of the Chichester families, who established Belfast in 1603. And the Chichesters also called themselves the Donegals. They just took the title away from um, Cattero Doherty whenever they snaffled his lands in, the, um, in, in, in one of those Gaelic chieftain wars in the 17th century. As the town built up, so streets were named after the important people or objects that gave it character. 
We've got Bridge Street, named after the bridge, not surprisingly, as you would have had the River Farset flowing through. And the bridge was, well, it's, it was placed where, if you can imagine in your mind's eye, where the traffic lights are now at the bottom of the street, which would have been exactly where the Farset would have flown. Waring Street was another early established street. Thomas Waring was Belfast sovereign. Remember I said that was the equivalent of mayor. That was in the 1650s. And he established the street after, after he came from Waringstown, which he'd already set up. And that area around Waring Street became the hub of Belfast commerce. You had commercial buildings. Also the headquarter of the Ulster Bank was there, which you may I'm sure be familiar with. It's now, of course, the Merchant Hotel which was run by Bill Woolsey. And before that, there were tanneries there as well. Um, as Waring himself, Thomas Waring had, there was also lots of fish processing works. And you will see if you go to the bottom of Waring Street, there's actually um, a plaque, bronze plaque, um, which uh, marked the fact that there was a large fishing or processing business there, or many actually. So there are other streets in the area, Skipper Street, where ship's captains would have come to stay and was only knocked through, knocked through about a hundred years ago. You've got Rosemary Lane, which became Rosemary Street. And actually wasn't named any after anybody in particular. It was named after a herb called Rosemary that helped disguise the rather over the top, disgusting smell of nearby tanneries, mills, and the faucet itself which was still uncovered at the time. And let's not forget that people also threw raw sewage into the river as well. There really wasn't anywhere else to put it. So that, again, this was before Belfast would have had a proper police force. So, um, you know, Rosemary Lane and, and the force, it was fair game for lots of smells and activities like that. There's an Academy Street which some of you may be familiar with, just off Donegal Street. Belfast Academy, that's named after Belfast Academy, which, is, which was established in the 1780s, and it hence has the name. Uh, and it's celebrated by a plaque a couple of years ago. It's there and has remained even if the school, Belfast Royal Academy, is now in North Belfast. And incidentally, for your information, you might like to know that um, the first, the man who set that up, Reverend Crummy, was also the uh, minister at the First Presbyterian Church in Rosemary Street, and for uh, Rosemary Lane, I should say, it only became Rosemary Street about 1800 or so. And at that stage, the two jobs kind of went hand in hand. A little sip of water to clear my throat here, folks. Hmm. Donegal Place and Donegal Street, they're named after the family of the Chichesters, whom I mentioned briefly, took the, the name after they suppressed Cahiro Doherty of Donegal during the 1641 to 1649 war. It was the second nine years war in no time at all. Basically, the local chieftains got more than a bit upset about the fact that all their land was taken by what were called the planters, who really basically suppressed the local people and took all their land. That is Donegal Place and Donegal Street. And we'll now see a picture of Donegal Place in its heyday. When Queen Victoria and her consort or husband, Albert, came visiting, albeit briefly, in 1849, much of the town was then renamed in their honour. They didn't hang around because, like today, there was a bit of a, a bit of a pan, a bit of an epidemic, a bit of a pandemic going on. There was a cholera epidemic at the time, so she actually came to Queen's University or Queen's College, as it was then called, and she bestowed her presence on it, but she didn't overdo it for very long. Now, there are many, many examples of the names of Queen Victoria and Albert and the royal influence that uh, they had on the town of Belfast. It only became a city later on. So I'm sure you can think of plenty yourself, but I'll reel off a few just in case you may have forgotten one or two. You've got King Street, Queen Street, North Queen Street. 
You've also got, of course, the Albert clock, which was built uh, uh, to um, it, 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 in honor of, of, uh, of Albert after he died. There's also, of course, the Albert Bridge Road. You've got Victoria Street, which was originally called Cow Lane, which gives an indication of exactly what it would have been used for at one stage. Um, because Belfast was basically very rural and was very close to the country until well into the 1800s. You've also got Victoria Square, which was called Poultry Square, I believe, at one stage. Again, that gives a fair indication as to what its previous usage would have been. You've got Great Victoria Street. Uh, you've also got um, Ladies Collegiate College became Victoria College later on, and they were at the Crescent Art, where the Crescent Art Centre now is. North Street is fairly evident in name, and at one stage it, it's marked, uh, it was marked as the northernmost part of the town. It was, it was once called Goose Lane, which rather follows on on the same agricultural theme as um, poultry, poultry Lane and Cow Lane as well. Um, and it's interesting because there's also a plaque at the end of North Street, which indicates exactly where uh, there would have been an awful lot of uh, small businesses and industry there as well. So that's all interesting stuff. But also interesting, hopefully, is that Townsend Street and Boundary Street in the Mid Shankill area, they indicated exactly where um, at one stage would have been the, the outer limits to the west of the town. So that, that again is quite interesting. Now, I'm sure lots of you are familiar with May Street and the markets area of Belfast. May Street, Maysfield, and May's markets and the markets themselves are all named due to the commerce and also due to the importance of a family called the May family, not surprisingly. They were very important, particularly to the Chichesters, and I will explain. Sir Edward, Edward May, he was an MP in the last Irish Parliament of 1801. But he was a bit, he was a bit, of, a, bit of an adventurer himself. He was a money lender, uh, one might say almost a loan shark. And he lent money to the Chichesters because the Chichesters were very good at spending money. Some of them were extremely sensible, but others were extremely good at spending. The Donegals were in dire financial straits due to their overspending. Now, they did a little bit of a deal, what I believe is called in business a contract. Sir Edward May's embarrassment was due to an illegitimate daughter who was more than matched by the Chichester's position. And hence there was a marriage, I suggest possibly a marriage of convenience and a large loan. And the Donegals were henceforth banished to Ormo where they managed to rack, rack up even more debt. And maybe may get a chance to talk about that later or maybe on another occasion. But there was one particular, uh, I think he was the fifth Earl, no, the, the second Marquess of Donegal and the fifth Earl, sixth Earl. The sixth Earl was very good at spending money and he really created all the problems and they were moved from their house in Donegal Place. They originally had been in a castle, but you might recall the castle burnt down in the 18th century, then moved to a lovely house in Donegal Place. Then they were banished, if that's the right word, to the Ormo area where they managed to rack up even more debt by high living and high spending. Speaking of Ormo, the, the name for that comes from the French for elm trees and also um, elm trees by the water. So that's interesting and obviously uh, the river flows through. Some of you may be familiar with a name called Hay Park Avenue. Um, and that was due to the overspending George Augustus, one of the Chichesters. That's where he kept his horses, hence the name. There are lots of other place names and streets that hopefully will be of some interest to you. Castle Ray, in Irish, it's the Grey Castle. And it's, um, there's an acknowledging nod to Con O'Neill, the last great Gaelic chieftain and landowner. He earned, owned, earned everything, he owned swathes of land in County Town, as far as Clandy Boy and beyond. Um, we've got as named uh, Conswater, Consbrook Avenue, etc. Uh, and unfortunately, he lost his land to the planters, uh, to the Chichesters, to 
Hamilton and Montgomery. Hamilton set up, set up Bangor. Montgomery set up uh, Newton Arts. And, and that's the way it went. In the same area at Castlereagh, and in that area around Conswater, we've got um, a street called Sagamore Gardens. Now, this is one of the most extraordinary named streets in Belfast. Actually named after a foreman allegedly misheard and misspelt Sycamore and wrote it down as Sagamore. And it's remained the same ever since. You couldn't make it up. Right. I'm going to talk a wee bit more about the west of the town now, or the city as it became. We'll talk a wee bit about the first mill in Belfast, which was in Millfield. We might have a little picture of that. Now, Millfield um, was in uh, where Millfield now is. Of course, there's no secret about that whatsoever. And that's exactly where corn would have been threshed for the first, first um, soldiers who would have come across um, from billeted by, by people like the Chichesters to, to keep the, the, the warring tribes under control and the chieftains in, in, in control as well. Along the same lines, Barrack Street, which is in Lower Falls, was where the English soldiers would have been billeted originally. Lanyon Place is named after Sir Charles Lanyon, the famous architect who designed Queen's University, amongst many other buildings, and had a company called Lanyon, Lynn and Lanyon, along with his son. We've got Chapel Lane where St. Mary's Church was constructed in 1784 and still stands, thanks, surprisingly perhaps, to money given by the radical Presbyterians of the time. Bank Street is named after the second bank in Belfast, built at what we know as the Bank Buildings, which was the Bank of the Four Johns, built at the behest of a merchant, Waddell Cunningham. Some streets are named after landlords, not many, but a few. There's a Berry Street, which is very near Castle Court, which was named after a landlord called Barry. And Hercules Place, which became Royal Avenue, obviously after the visit by Victoria and Albert. And Hercules Place was named after Hercules Langford, after whom Langford Lodge was named out of the town towards Antrim. Now, we've discussed a wee bit about the entries before, and it's worth maybe reiterating one or two, because some, some of them do have place names that are quite interesting. We've got Joy Street is named after Francis Joy. We've also got Joy's Entry, which is named after the same man who printed the newsletter there from 1737 onwards. And it's, in fact, the longest printed and running newspaper in Europe. We've got Wine Cellar Entry, which is the hub of commerce at the time, Wine and Spirits, which still, of course, got a pub there. It was also a grocer's and an oyster restaurant, and it was originally called Biggert's Entry. Unfortunately, I can't shed any more light on it. There was a Sugar House Entry, which is now gone, where there was a sugar refining business. Um, Pottinger's Entry was named after the family from Berkshire, who are well-to-do, lots of land. Um, Sir Henry Pottinger was a soldier and adventurer, and he was also first governor of a British colony, Hong Kong, which of course is no longer a British colony. Lots of other little interesting quirky names here we have and nicknames of one thing or another. There's the area called the Half Bath. Now it's now been slightly gentrified as the Cathedral Quarter. But many of the, the streets that, that were there have now changed or gone altogether. But it was known as the half bath because people were poor and survived on Barney Hughes, one pence bath. And, all, and there was also a roundabout at the end of it at one stage, which looked like half of one of the aforesaid baths. So there's two reasons why it was called the half bath area. And in the half bath area, you had Cotton Court, which pays testimony to the old industry of cotton, of course, which was around before linen really took off. You've got Exchange Street West, they're both there, um, still there. It would have been used for business. There are also old streets which have gone, like Foundry Lane and Cooper's Entry, which hint at barrel making and engineering. And of course, engineering has always played a, a big, big part in um, the industry uh, of Belfast in large and small businesses. 
On a different note altogether, many streets and avenues were quirkily and bizarrely named after horses that won the Derby in the 1930s in particular. Must have been one, one chap who liked putting a few quid on the horses. Um, you've got Orby Street, um, Orby Park, Orby Drive. You've got Lattice Drive. They all tend to be over sort of BT5 Castle Ray direction. Trigo or Trigo, T-R-I-G-O, don't know how to pronounce it, Homern and Donovan Parade. They're all out there in the suburbs and they all would have been built around the 1930s or so. So that was happy days for somebody. You've got the Holy Lands and developer and build, builder gentleman called R.J. McConnell had visited the Holy Lands of Egypt and Palestine in the 1890s. He obviously must have been impressed by what he, he saw or influenced in some ways anyway, because when he built some of the streets, I'm sure you're all familiar with the names Palestine Street, uh, Carmel Street, and Jerusalem Street. On a different tack altogether, Maryville and Myrtlefield Parks in BT9 were named after the builder's daughter. Linen Hall Street was named after the White Linen Hall, which stood where the Belfast City Hall now stands. And we'll see a wee picture now of, of the White Linen Hall. Just to tell you a wee bit about that, Linen Hall Street itself is quite interesting because I have a friend who's a solicitor there and his, his building that he works from, they have been in their time involved in the linen business. They were private residents and they were also a solicitor's business. Uh, at the top of the street, just opposite, which is what is now the back of the city hall, which, which was the front of the White Linen Hall, it's almost when it was rebuilt in the early part of the 20th century, they decided to do absolutely everything very differently. Um, Linen Hall Street is one of those many streets, but basically you've got at the very top, you've got a building that is 10 square, which was at one stage and um, the post office, but also was the Jaffa's uh, J-A-F-F-E, their family linen uh, storage place, and also was a private residence of a gentleman called William Drennan, who was a United Irishman and was also very much responsible for setting up um, the Belfast Academical Institution. Talking of Belfast Academical Institution, you've got all those streets like College Square East, College Square North, and they were all literally named after um, Belfast Academical Institution, if not named after, named because of it, basically. Wellington Place, uh, was once South Parade. Um, Wellington Place, of course, named after the Duke of Wellington. His mother was Anna of Anna Dale. You've also got the Welly Park, a well-known um, uh, hotel and bar. And you've also got beside it Wellesley Avenue, and that is named after Wellington's real name, which is Arthur Wellesley. Lots of streets on the Falls Road are named after battles. You've got Sevastopol Street, Crimea Street, Inkerman Street, and Balaclava Street. Lots of them named from that time of the 1850s, the Crimean War. Presumably that's when a lot of them were being built. Um, up, up in um, BT 15, uh, Antrim Road, you've got uh, Baltic Avenue and Atlantic Avenue, which are named after Harland and Wolf Streets. And sticking with the same area for a minute, you've also got Deer Park Avenue, which is named after deer that roamed in the ground grounds of the newish castle built off the Antrim Road in the 19th century in Scottish baronial style for the family, for the Chichester family, after they had been at Ormo, where there was a castle as well for a while. That's quite interesting. And again, talking about the connection of, of the military connection of the 19th century, up in North Belfast, you've also got Waterloo Gardens, Waterloo Drive and such, which is obviously named after the battle. Irish plays a part in, in place names as well. Finnehy, which is the suburb of Belfast, is named is, um, Irish really for Whitefield. Malone is the Plain of the Lambs. Stranmillis is the Sweet Stream. Castle Ray is quite literally Grey Castle. We've talked about that already. Uh, the, um, the inauguration stone for Con O'Neill and for the O'Neill family 
for it, this part of it, they lived in, in the Belfast area and beyond. Um, that was found at um, the Presbyterian, uh, First Presbyterian Church in, in Castle Ray. Um, Not Nagani is the Hill of the Rabbits. Talking of animals, Wolf Hill in North Belfast near Liganeel was supposedly where the last wolf in Ulster was killed sometime in the early 1700s. We've mentioned Wellington Place and the Welly Park. Shankill comes from the Irish word for old church. In fact, the church at um, St George's Church was known as what was called a Chapel of Ease for the old church in Shankill, because those who couldn't actually get up to the Shankill to worship could use the church there as a chapel of ease. And the fifth, in the fifth century, the church was known as the Church of St. Patrick of the White Ford. That's really in and around the time when St. Patrick would have come to Ireland and would have brought Christianity, of course, with them. The Falls is Irish for territory of the enclosures or the hedges. Fountain Street was originally known as Water Street. Again, that ties in so much with the original water supply. Um, we've also got Fountain Lane and Fountainville Avenue, which is more just beyond Sandy Row. And speaking of Sandy Row, which was previously, I believe, called Cars Row with two R's, uh, it was so called because of a sandbank near the road, which followed the high water mark resulting from the, the tidal flows of the Lagan. And you've, of course, got the Boyne Bridge, which is one of the oldest bridges in Belfast. That was, of course, named after the Battle of the Boyne. So, folks, that's a bit of information on old street names and places of Belfast. So I hope you've enjoyed that, and I hope I've uh, shed a bit of light on various places and names. Them. Stay up to date with latest activities through our website, which is www dementiafriendlyeastbelfast.com. I'll repeat that, www.dementiafriendlyeastbelfast.com and also on our Facebook page. So once again, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again. Take care, bye.